Maintenance. Your Kumi unit and control system will perform only as well as they're maintained. A consistent maintenance effort is the only way to ensure that the unit operates properly. You've identified all the components and you know how the control system operates. Now we'll spend some time with the all important maintenance requirements. We'll be referring to service intervals that are recommended by the manufacturers. Your own rig operation and PMS program will dictate your maintenance schedule. First, let's begin at the head end of the electrical control system, the power pack. Every day, check to make sure that the AC power light is on and that the DC low voltage light is off. Every week, check all the cables for tightness and wipe off the terminals. Remove all the battery covers and visually check the electrolyte level. Make certain that the fluid covers the plates in each cell. If you find one that's low, you'll have to add some distilled water. Add enough to cover the plate. Remember not to use tap water. Next, while the covers are off, use a hydrometer and check the specific gravity of the electrolyte in each cell and log it on a record sheet. You'll have to find out what specific gravity should be. This depends on the kind of cells you have. If one's too low with the charger working properly, replace the battery. The pump unit and control manifold. Here lies the biggest maintenance task. Of course, this is the heart of the system. Make certain you perform all the necessary maintenance jobs. Remember, before you work on any part of the system, make sure the associated power source, whether it be hydraulic, electric, or rig air, is turned off and bled off if necessary. Think about what you're going to work on before you do it. Are you about to change a filter in a high pressure line without isolating that line and bleeding it off first? Are you about to work on the triplex pump while the motor control switch is still in auto? Your first priority is safety. On a daily basis, drain the air filter bowl of all liquid and remove any solids. Back off the drain cock and let the moisture drain until air begins blowing out. Then close the drain cock. If the fluid level is allowed to rise above the filter baffle, the liquid will enter the air system and be carried downstream. Periodically, you're going to have to remove the filter element for cleaning. Wash it with kerosene or a cleaner compatible with polycarbonate. After cleaning the element, blow it dry with rig air. Check to make sure that your airline lubricator is full of oil. If you need to add some, use an SAE 10W lightweight oil. Condensation can occur in these lubricators. As you know, oil is lighter than water, and so that water settles to the bottom of the bowl. Make sure you drain the water trap daily. Be careful, of course, not to drain out a lot of oil as well. Next, let's look at the triplex pump. Depending on how often your pumps are turning on and off, a check of the packing glands once per week should be sufficient. But then again, it only takes a minute to look, so it never hurts to check them on a daily basis. Keep in mind that over-tightening the packing gland nut will cause the motor to overload and or the packing to dry out and burn. A proper adjustment on the gland nut should allow the packing to be loose enough to maintain a fluid film for lubrication. When the pump is running, you should be able to count approximately one drop every 10 seconds off each rod. Every week, check the chain and sprocket drive for the correct tension. There shouldn't be more than one inch deflection under finger pressure applied between the sprockets. About once a week, check the crankcase oil level. If it's low, use a good quality SAE 10W40. 
This will work as an all-purpose oil for ambient temperatures of 0 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. If you prefer to use a single viscosity oil, then use an SAE 10W in temperatures between 0 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit and an SAE 20W in ambient temperature ranges from 40 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Also once a week, check the fluid level in the drive chain guard. An SAE 90 compound chain oil will be sufficient when the ambient temperature in your Kumi room is above 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Use an SAE 80 compound chain oil in temperatures less than 20 degrees Fahrenheit. About every six months, or at the end of every well, drain the chain guard oil. Remove the chain guard cover. Make a thorough inspection of both sprockets and the chain. Look for any wear on the chain. and make sure the sprockets are firmly in their proper positions. Both sprockets must be in line with each other. Then, clean out the bottom of the chain guard. If you find any sludge or grit in the bottom of the guard, clean everything thoroughly with diesel. Rotate the sprocket to cycle the pump a time or two by hand and check for smooth operation. In order to cycle the pump easily by hand, you'll probably have to open the bleeder valve on the top of the pump fluid cylinder. This is also a good time to notice if the pump discharge check valve is working properly. Remember, it's the valve that keeps the accumulator pressure from backing into the pumps. Take a look at the bleeder valve. There should be no fluid coming out. That means the check valve is holding. Do this at least once a week. Put the chain guard cover back on. Refill the guard to the proper oil level. Again, about every six months or at the end of a well, it's a good idea to drain the crankcase, remove the cover, and completely clean the inside. Take a good close look for sludge, dirt, or grit. If you find a sludge or grit problem, it may be time to pull out the wrenches. The pump is due for a thorough inspection and possible repair. Check the pop-off valves about every six months or at the end of every well. Make sure they relieve at the proper pressure setting. If not, adjust them so that they do.
In our 3,000 PSI systems, that would be at 3,300 PSI. In our 4,500 PSI systems, set the pop-off valves to 5,000 PSI. On the suction end, clean the suction strainer at least weekly. Close the shut-off valve and remove the suction strainer. Clean it with a soft bristle brush, maybe some soap and water. Don't use a solvent or diesel. Be sure to rinse it thoroughly. Replace the strainer and open the shutoff valve. Remember that you bled the pressure in the pump cylinder when you opened the bleeder valve, so be sure to prime the pump before you put it back online. Turn the pump on with the bleeder valve open, then close the valve when the fluid stream is purged of air. Let's consider the backup pumps now. These are a series of weekly checks. While the pump is running, adjust the fluid flow rate through the packing to about one drop every minute. Check the rod for any leakage past the packing. The guidelines for maintaining the triplex pump follow here also. And don't forget to clean and inspect the suction strainer. As you know, the backup pumps rarely turn on during normal operation. The most important maintenance consideration is that when they're supposed to turn on, they do. So, make sure that the hydro air pressure switch is properly adjusted and the pump does indeed come on. Next, we have the high pressure 40 micron filters. Once a week, these need to be removed, cleaned, and inspected. Change out one at a time. Close both the upstream and downstream shutoff valves. This will isolate the filter from system pressure while the other filter continues to handle the discharge fluid. Bleed the pressure from the filter housing. Then remove the filter bowl. Clean the filter by filling it with a full-strength biodegradable liquid detergent like Joy. Allow the detergent to permeate the element for a few minutes. Run a water hose into the top of the element. Turn on the water and reverse flush the element, forcing the detergent through it. Use clean potable water. Rinse the element until the water is clear of soap. If the filter is going to be stored for later reuse, be sure and dry it completely with air before storing it. Reinsert the filter back into the housing.
make certain never to over tighten the element bowl into the housing. That is, no 48 inch pipe wrenches here. Check the bleeder plug o ring. Replace it if necessary. Re tighten the bleeder plug when you're ready. Open the upstream and downstream shutoff valves. Then repeat the procedure with the other 40 micron filter. There's one more, a 10 micron filter in the line to the pilot accumulators. Let's step back now and look at the hydraulic control manifold. Grab your trusty oil can once a week and oil the adjusting screws on the quarter inch air regulators for increase decrease functions. Put a drop or two on the detents of all the four way valves and rub a light coat of oil on the exposed portion of the two and three position connecting rods. Fill the oil hole or cap of the piston rod with a lightweight oil. Inject some grease at the grease fitting on the mounting end of the cylinders. And apply a silicon valve lubricant to protect the fitting. As long as you're here at the regulators, flip the selector switch to unit. Decrease and increase the setting of the AKR through a range of 1 to 200 PSI below and above the normal setting a couple of times. The AKRs can settle and lose their effective sealing if the seals remain in one position for an indefinite period of time. Remember then to switch the selector back to remote. Open and inspect all the junction boxes every two months. Check for any signs of corrosion or dampness. Always be certain to reinstall and fully tighten all the cover bolts. This is necessary to maintain the explosion proof integrity of the junction box. And on a daily basis, look over the RBQ junction boxes. Look for any sign of fluid leaks. Moving down to the fluid reservoir and mix system, inspect and clean the Y-type strainer element or other filter your system may have on a weekly basis. Check to make certain that the water pressure, the water flow rate, and the barrel pump strokes per minute are all properly adjusted, giving you the proper mix ratio in your hydraulic fluid. Okay, this is one of the most important maintenance tasks you have to perform. Lastly, put a drop or two of oil on the water regulator adjusting screw. Call the driller and tell him you're going to test the low level indicator lights and alarm on his panel. Grab a broom or solid piece of wood and carefully push the lower float to trigger a response. Do the same with the concentrate and glycol tanks if you have floats for them. Check the pumps running indicator lights by momentarily turning on pump number one. Then do the same with pump number two. And if you can, check the low pressure alarm. Every month, take a look at the pressure gauges on the pump unit. Then check to see that the gauges on the driller's panel read exactly the same. If not, the gauges on the driller's panel will have to be tweaked. At the driller's and remote mini panel, test the indicator lamps weekly. All you have to do is press the lamp test button. If any have burned out, replace them. And that's your system maintenance procedures. Carry a log around with you and note each and every maintenance task you perform. Note any discrepancies and take corrective action as needed. Later programs in this series will detail repair procedures of many components to the control system. Refer to your rig library for those titles. And heed our safety warning one more time. Never perform any maintenance function without first ensuring that source power to the equipment under maintenance is off, that the source is tagged, 
and that any remaining pressure is bled off. Think safety all the time, because the most important part of the hydraulic system is you.